Photography is a pastime many of us take for granted. With the rise of digital cameras and smartphones, we can't imagine what it would be like not to be able to take photographs whenever we please. However, photography has actually not been around that long. And in Wick in the 19th century, there was a family who dominated the business right into the 20th century. These were the Johnsons of Wick in Caithness. In 1829, William Johnson arrived in Wick to work on the lead flashings of the parish church, which was due to be opened in 1830. He had been born in Greenock in 1804 to Charles Johnson and Margaret Scriminger, but had apprenticed as a plumber, which took him all over the country and was sent to Wick by his employer at the time, Charles Coventry of Edinburgh. He lived in Preston Pans in East Lothian, but Wick was a boom town. The harbour was becoming busy with the rise of the herring industry and the town itself was expanding with the wealth the industry brought with it. So he decided to stay and found accommodation in Shore Lane. As he found work as a plumber, so did he find himself a wife. He met Louisa Williamson who had been born in Wick on 18th September 1810, the daughter of a local cabinet maker, Alexander Williamson, and his wife, Catherine Davidson. They were married on 20th February 1835, and in all, the couple had nine children. These were Charles, born in 1836, and who continued with the plumbing business until his death in 1908. Alexander, born 1839, William, born 1840, but died very young, David, born 1845, and died in 1870, James, born in 1846, but who died in 1850, John came in 1849, but he also died in 1850. Another John was born in 1851 and died in 1929. And finally, another son, called James, was born in 1854. Alexander and James both went on to become photographers. In 1853, when the family still lived at Shore Lane, along with Hannah, Louisa's sister, and her husband, John Williamson, young Alexander left school in order to train as a plumber and gas fitter like his father and older brother, Charles, who had joined the business. However, it seems he was more of a bookkeeper than apprentice plumber. For a time, he worked at Wake Harbour as a clerk, where he managed to pick up a few foreign languages, then returned to the family business. But his interest lay elsewhere. Photography was in its infancy, and he became increasingly interested in taking it up professionally. In 1863, at his father's house in Laurel Bank, Alexander set up a photographic studio and began getting paying customers. Shortly afterwards, he had enough money to set up his own professional premises in Parliament Square in Wick, behind the plumber's shop. He was a rather odd-looking character around town, pushing his mobile darkroom in a cart with his camera ready to take photographs of Wick and its environs, especially the harbour. It was a hive of activity and he would spend hours photographing the boats, the fishermen and the herring girls who gutted the fish before they were packed into barrels for transportation to the markets in the south. In 1869, Alexander went to Kildonan in Sutherland to capture the scenes of the gold rush there with D.R. Simpson, who owned the ironmongery in Wick. The journey took them four days. Just three years after Alexander had visited the gold field, he had to move to larger premises in Brim's buildings in Bridge Street, where people would go into the studio with their husbands or wives or children and have their portraits done. By this time, 
His younger brother, James, had joined him as an assistant photographer. Their record of Caithness life is truly remarkable. Between 1870 and World War I, it is thought they took around 60,000 portraits of friends, families, weddings and individuals, and this made up the bulk of their work. However, they still managed to take time to photograph local scenes and record events in the county. In 1879, Alexander married Annie Cormack and James married Christina Cormack, both daughters of John Cormack, a local fish curer. Alexander and Annie went on to have five children. These were William, born 1879, then Annie in 1882, John in 1883, Alexander in 1885, and Louisa in 1889. James and Christina had three children, Annie, Louisa, and James Charles. The business flourished and new premises were purchased in Thurso in 1895 in order to accommodate the people from that side of the county, although Wick remained the principal studio. Alexander ran the Thurso studios, but his health was failing by this time. In 1896, he went to Edinburgh to seek medical treatment, but never returned. He died suddenly in the capital, aged 57. His 17-year-old son, William, who was already showing an interest in photography and was showing signs he had a natural flair for it, took over the running of the Thurso business, travelling there by train every day. However, he was also a talented artist and he displayed his work in the Wick studio. Many were pastel drawings of the Caithness coast and they were noted in the local John O'Groat journal of 3rd May. 1892 as being a very fine collection executed with the artistic excellence for which Mr Johnson has secured wide fame. By 1894 the Wick studio had moved to Market Place. This was the final move but the business still flourished at this stage. James died in 1922 aged 68 and with his son, James Charles Johnson, having predeceased him in 1919, the business fell to William for safekeeping, as neither his sister Annie nor his cousin Annie Cormack Johnson wanted to work at it. It wasn't until ten years later that he was helped. His son Alexander, born in 1909, went off to art college, but returned to Wick and joined the business. But times had already begun to change, with more and more people owning their own cameras. But the Johnsons adapted and began film processing. However, it wasn't enough to maintain the Thurso studio. It closed in 1938. C cameras such as the Kodak Box Brownie were now accessible to all, especially with the invention of roll film by George Eastman and there was just not such a great demand for the work in the Johnson studio. In 1939, war was declared, and in 1941, Alex was called up and joined the Royal Air Force as a war photographer, just as his father had done during World War I, when he flew with the then Royal Flying Corps. He was sent to Farnborough, to the School of Photography there in the spring of 1941 and when he passed his exams was posted to RAF Snaith in Yorkshire. He went on to be stationed in Egypt, then Kenya, where news came through that the war was over. He left Kenya and headed back to Britain, making his way from New Haven in Sussex to Blackpool, then finally Wick where he took up the photographic profession once more. William died in 1950, so Alex took over the business. He
He was the third generation of Johnson photographers. He ran the business successfully until the mid-1970s when he retired. Alex lived to the ripe old age of 101 and died as a result of a chest infection at the Caithness General Hospital where he passed away in the early hours of 2nd July 2011. In the 150 years of the Johnsons in Caithness, nearly 100,000 photographs captured the county, leaving a valuable source of historical documentation for subsequent generations. <laughs>